Yes, it's a blind piece of machine. You don't have to put it on until after the sermon. Good morning, everybody. Those of you who are joining us on Zoom, on site, on Facebook, or YouTube, we are having some video issues here in the sanctuary. It looks like the walls are melting on our uh, mounted camera. So we are back old school to the camera on a computer. Uh, so we are going to have a stationary view this morning, um, but hopefully we will still be able to make a joyful noise and give praise and worship to God. Uh, so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prelude. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. <clears throat> Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy.
Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you cause us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering song, God is good all the time. darkest night his light will shine God is good God is good all the time God is good God is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine God is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine God is good God is good all the time. If you're walking, if you're walking through the valley and there are shadows all around, do not fear. He will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound because he has promised to never leave you. sinners we were sinners so unworthy still for us he chose to die filled us with his holy spirit now we can stand and testify that that his love is everlasting and his mercies they will never end god is good you put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, this light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Though I may not understand, though I may not understand all the plans you have for me.
God is good. He is so good all the time. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit, that you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. <laughs> Fill your home with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehite, Bethlehite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to his, the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. And el the elders of the city came to him trembling and said, do you come peaceful? peaceably and he said peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice and he sacrificed just and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice when they came he looked at Eba and thought surely the Lord's anoint anointed is now before the Lord but the Lord said to Samuel do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They, they look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abadadra and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shamrock passed by and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made the seven of the sons pass before Samuel and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him for he will not sit down until the, till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, rise and anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mighty upon David. From that day forward, Samuel then set out and went to Raha. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord are you light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for the singing of the gospel acclamation. Turn to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Meet 
turn to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. This gospel is even longer than last week's gospel. If you would like to sit down, you are invited to do that. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. So that God's work might be revealed in him, we must work the works of him who sent him while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But he, they kept asking him, then how are your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and I washed and I received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he received his sight, and he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his, the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son, that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is, how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. 
We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began what has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin and, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So in the story, we never get a name for this man who was born blind. Strangely, he actually speaks in the story a lot. Most of the time when when characters are not named in stories, they don't get much voice. But over the history of scripture and the church, there has not been much opportunity for people that we would maybe call disabled to have a voice. So this morning, I yield my pulpit to a pastor, uh, the Reverend Dwayne Steele, a man born blind for his take on this gospel. If technology is going to allow us to watch the video. The blind man who knows too much. Reflections on John 9 by Pastor Dwayne Steele. So he introduces himself in the beginning of the video and then reads the gospel. So we're going to start where he um, begins his sermon. You see, your sin remains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe the man in John 9 is one of the most misunderstood people in the Bible. Apparently, his witness was so powerful, the crowds continued to talk about his story in John 10, 21 and 11, 37. But like many of Jesus' other followers, his name isn't recorded in the Bible. To us, he is simply the man born blind. Many preachers use this man's story to talk about darkness and light. And many Bible publishers add the heading spiritual blindness to this text, as though the blind man in this story were a symbolic object instead of a real person. I know what it's like to live in the shadow of powerful labels like that because I myself have been totally blind all my life. My earliest memories of going to church include the awkward whispers of neighbors who quietly ask my family if there might be any hope that I would be able to see someday. I wasn't ashamed of being blind, but I did feel humiliated by the attitudes of people who were whispering about me as though I weren't really there. Many people are so afraid of the dark, they simply can't get past the word blind 
to see a real person beyond the label. When Jesus and his disciples first encountered the man in John 9, the disciples assumed the man's blindness was some kind of punishment for sin. And unfortunately, this attitude still exists today, even in our churches, where disability and sin are still being linked together in weird ways like in the expression, spiritual blindness. But Jesus clearly rejected this idea in John 9, 3, saying, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. Some preachers interpret this to mean the man was born blind so that Jesus could come along and perform a miracle for all to see. But this interpretation robs the man of his humanity, reducing him to a mere prop in the story. Even the use of the word healing to describe this miracle implies that there was originally something wrong or broken about this man's blindness, which seems quite the opposite of what Jesus was saying in John 9, 3. I have to admit, I don't like being blind sometimes, especially when it prevents me from doing useful things like driving a car. But Jesus made it clear that blindness does not prevent us from doing God's will. The neighbors assumed the man in John 9 had spent his life as a beggar, merely surviving instead of living out a real vocation. Jesus changed all that by giving the man not only eyesight, but also a sense of mission. After performing a fairly common ancient medical procedure, with saliva and mud, Jesus directed the man to wash in the pool of Siloam, which we are told means scent. My grandma Steele sent me to my own pool of Siloam, which took the form of the New York Institute for the Education of the Blind, a school in the Bronx that provided the best education blind children of the 1950s and 60s could receive. There, in addition to learning the usual academic subjects, I also became proficient in Braille. I studied in a conservatory level music program and I made many lifelong friendships. Nowadays, most blind kids go to public school and hopefully learn similar skills while being part of diverse communities in their own neighborhoods. For us, healing happens when the people around us learn to heal their ignorance about us, when they learn to truly love and welcome us, when they realize that what we think and say and do matters. The man in John 9 emerged from the pool of Siloam with a sense of mission and self-worth that shocked his neighbors. They could not believe he was the same person, so they dragged him off to be examined by the local religious authorities. The authorities were especially suspicious because Jesus had worked this miracle on a Sabbath day, which they considered a violation of religious law. Some of them said, this man is not from God. But the man born blind said, he is a prophet. The man's own parents 
cowered before these powerful religious leaders, fearing the consequences of questioning the status quo. But the man born blind responded more and more boldly to each question the authorities asked. He claimed his right to connect with the leadership of his community, but they rejected him and his belief in Jesus. The man in John 9 and I have both endured the rejection of people unwilling to trust the leadership skills of a blind person. When I was a child and I began to express interest in becoming a pastor, people said, oh, isn't that nice? But when I grew up and tried to make it happen for real, the response was much different. How are you going to be a pastor if you can't see? I almost gave up hope when I was rejected for 17 different internships on the same day. For me, the healing love of Jesus came in the form of supportive people along the way who believed in me. The people of Gladesboro Evangelical Lutheran Church in Hillsville, Virginia, called me as their pastor, and we lived out our Christian vocation together for over 32 years. The man in John 9 was driven out of his community as punishment for his testimony. And when Jesus heard about this, he welcomed him as one of the many disciples who were spreading the good news. Once again, Jesus chose a person whom society had rejected. Once again, as Mary proclaimed in Luke 152, God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. I believe this is what Jesus meant when he said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. In the kingdom of God, we wear no labels other than our identity as the children of God. As Paul wrote in Galatians 3:28. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. And John 9 also reminds us there is no blind or sighted, no disabled or normal. All of God's children are called to live lives of discipleship in various ways. For us in the church, the story of John 9 is about paying attention to the perspectives of people who have often been ignored, including people who have been marginalized under the label disability. And while we're at it, let's talk about the hymn, Amazing Grace. I know. I was blind, but now I see, is a quote from John 9, 25. But this hymn takes a way out of context. The man in John 9 was talking about literally getting eyesight, not about spiritual blindness. When blind people like me come to worship, we don't deserve to be used as symbols of sinfulness. So let's change the words to Amazing Grace and any other hymns that confuse blindness with ignorance or sin. In order for the church to grow spiritually, it's time to encourage all people to share their gifts. Even when God calls some of us to witness the good news 
in ways that threaten the status quo. Our secular culture teaches us to compete or conform, but God calls us to a different way, working together, needing each other, being the body of Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, you have created us all in your image, giving each of us a unique calling to love and serve you. Teach us how to belong to the body of Christ, how to lead and be led, how to love and be loved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We ask forgiveness as we confess that our hymns are not always perfect. I did not warn Morgan ahead of time. So let's just keep that in mind as we sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Please stand as you are able. saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are
the earth shall soon the earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever mine with the whole church let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in according with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers and intercession. O oh God, we call. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church the world, and all of creation. seal us by the Holy Spirit and mark us with the cross of Christ forever in baptism inspire us by your love as together we strive for justice and peace in the earth creating God by your word you have made all things and you hate nothing you have made teach us to perceive the beauty and the breath of your creation from the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud Powerful God, you anoint kings and establish rulers. Guide the work of heads of state and elected officials. Encourage them to lead with justice and remove the barriers that impede the well-being of all. From deep 
deep inside we yearn for you. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. Keep watch over those who weep. Tend all who are sick and comfort those who grieve especially those listed on our prayer list and those we name now aloud or silently. God of history, with thanksgiving, we remember our ancestors in faith who cared for your people. We praise you for the ways they formed the faith of others and continue to inspire us. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace to everybody joining us on Zoom. Each week we take the time in our worship to acknowledge that all we have are gifts from God, our time, talents, and treasures, our ability to proclaim the gospel regardless of labels that society puts on us. We are thankful for all of the ways that you use God's gifts to be servants to all people, especially in the ways that you partner with us here at Grace. If you'd like to financially support the ministries, here at Grace, you can give electronically or in person. There is information in our bulletin, on our website, and on the Zoom chat about how to give electronically. We are thankful for one-time gifts or sustaining gifts of any size. Giving thanks for... 
be helpful if I had my microphone on. <laughs> Thank you, whoever put that in the chat. Well, thanks. Um, all that we have is a gift from God. Thank you for using those gifts to do God's work in the world, especially for the ways you partner with us here at Grace. Um, and Tom will pray our offering prayer. Please stand if you are able. <coughs> Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all of our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore, or again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. For those of you who will be communing in your pews or in your homes, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Give us bread 
for the journey give us breath we guide our way as we travel guide our way guide our way as we travel guide our way with so many roads before us where to go is hard to say guide our way as we travel guide our way make us one with each other make us one make us one with each other make us one all the walls we built around us may we learn to tear them down make us one with each other make us one lead us home to the garden lead us home lead us home to the garden lead us home live with all creation find a place and never roam lead us home to the garden lead us home give us bread for the journey give us bread give us bread for the journey give us bread when our legs are getting heavy and we're hanging down our heads give us bread the journey give us God the giver of love Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. If you are joining us on Zoom and you have an announcement for the good of the gathered, uh, please put a note in the chat so that we know to spotlight you. Are there any announcements in the sanctuary? Debbie. Debbie. she's coming up I'll remind you that Easter lily orders are due today if you would like to help us ordain adorn <laughs> adorn Why did I, did I messed up two weeks ago and now it's stuck in my head if you would like to help us adorn the sanctuary on Easter uh, you can order plants they are ten dollars each uh, envelopes are in the narthex if you're not able to make it to the building uh, please send um, Give a call to the office tomorrow. There's a prayer request in the chat uh, from Mary uh, asking prayers for Victor's uncle who is in the hospital. We will keep him in our prayers. Debbie. Good morning, everyone. Um, we'd like to welcome our visitor today. Her She's name in is. The back pew, Savannah. She's. Um, her name is Helen, and we'd like to welcome her. Uh, Millie's already given her the love loaf, so here's a cross to go with that love loaf. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you come back. Thanks, Debbie. If you're joining us online and have not yet connected with us, um, Officially, you can do that through our digital visitor card, which is under the Connect tab of our website, www.gracelutheranchesapeake.org. On the website, under the News and Upcoming, under the Calendar tab on the News and Upcoming Events page, you can find the Zoom links for all of our gatherings, um, both Zoom and hybrid, throughout the week. Uh, so we have Monday Bible study on Zoom, Wednesday evening 
hold an evening prayer, which is hybrid, um, and then worship here again next Sunday, both at 8.30 and 11, and that is on-site and online. Next week is the uh, deadline for the March Caring Madness Collection. If you would like to donate toiletries, uh, incontinent supplies, or feminine products, those can go in the box in the narthex by next Sunday. And also we are seeking egg cartons, preferably cardboard, preferably dozen size, but at this point I'd take whatever you got. If you have empty, empty egg cartons, uh, put them in my office. Any other announcements? The only other thing that I want to uh, highlight is that we have Holy Week and Easter coming up and are in need of many worship of servers for those extra services. Um, so next Sunday at 8.30, we need an assisting minister. Is there faith? Thank you. And then I'm not going to go through all of the blanks that are left um, in the following week, but the following week, uh, Sunday, April 2nd, is Palm Passion Sunday. Mm -hmm. And for the Passion reading, we need six readers. So lots of readers. And the, the clue is the lower the number, the more reading there is. The higher the number, the less amount of reading there is. If that's important to you as you sign up one through six. Um, but right now we only have a communion assistant that day. Uh, so go sign up for Palm Passion Sunday or Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, um, and then Easter Sunday as well. There's lots of openings for you to serve in worship. If you're joining us on Zoom, you can be a lector or a passion reader, um, even on Zoom. You don't have to be on site. Any other announcements? Then let us rise and sing our sending song, You Never Let Go. Oh, no. 
a light. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that. 